the shortest person at six foot five or one meter 95. So Baron Horst gets the touch of the Gonzalez block. So it's uh, first blood to the Netherlands. Both these sides have played and beaten the number one seeds in this competition. So this is a fascinating clash. And the service ace. Yeah, you're absolutely right. In Pool A, this Cuban duo went undefeated, taking down Simon and Figo, the number one seed, and they did it in the third set, 15 to 10. And then it was the Netherlands who actually eliminated that same number one team in the round of 32. So both these teams showing their potential as the Netherlands get an ace right down the middle of the court. A little confusion right there by the Cubans. Second successive ace. Again, he tries to thread it down the middle, Baron Horst. And they're all at sea here a little bit, Cuba. This is not the start they would have wanted. No, and Cuba's really a, a good ball control team, usually very consistent. And right now, they look a little surprised to be out here on center court. They've played a number of matches on center court. It's the Dutch pair who've not been here. That is super stuff from the Dutch. Somehow they keep it alive and it's been missed. And that's what we always say, like with service errors, it's so frustrating. Get your opponents to play one more set of three and you never know what might happen. Always keep that ball in. Groveling in the backcourt is Van Garder and they keep it in play. And then what does Nivaldo do? It's that ball. And look at that shot just out of bounds. So we got a point for the Netherlands. This is a fantastic start right here. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything better. Up five to zero, really striking first and putting the Cubans in a very deep hole. It's another race, six zip. And uh, wow, timeout call by Cuba. It's uh, as bad as it possibly could be. It couldn't be any worse for Cuba right now. And they almost look confused on that last one. Nivaldo didn't even make a move. They were just frozen, like mesmerized. And right now, they need to change their attitude. They have to get more of an aggressive mindset. So then let me ask you, you're playing with your partner. You've had three aces down the middle. What do you do? Do you say, right, listen, whatever happens, if it goes down the middle, you take it. Well, how, how do you rectify the situation that the Cubans are now facing? What well, would you whoever's do? whoever's in the cross court, so whoever would be receiving cross court to where the position of the server would have priority to take that middle. So depending on where the server is, the cross court player needs to say, I got middle, you move over, anything in the middle is my ball and be aggressive. But he seems to be serving from the middle of the park. So if he's serving from the middle of the park and you're set up, then there isn't a cross court player. Yeah, then one of the players just needs to step up and say, I have the middle ball but you have to work it out before the serve happens. And that's something that the Cubans have not done so far. Yeah. Now Cuba finally on the scoreboard and we're at the first side switch. They're down one six. Yeah, I don't know of all the matches that we have done this week. We're in day number eight of 10. I have not seen a six one switch. I've seen a five two and normally it's four three usually but 6-1 is total domination out of the gate. I guess the point being is, if you're gonna have a little wobble, have it early on, because at least it gives you some time to try and make amends and eat into this deficit. But uh, the way the Dutch pair has started this one, I feel it's gonna be quite tricky for the Cubans. Yeah, both these teams have experience at center court. We mentioned earlier, when you get on center court, when you're introduced, you only have about five to seven minutes before that first whistle. But like I said, both these teams have experienced that routine out here. And so I can't really give Cuba that excuse. They know what to expect and they just kind of came out asleep. Now, Nivaldo does have a big serve if he can get it going, but that's a, a service error. Baby. 
Yeah, the Dutch pair played here on the first day a week ago. They had set points against Evanjo and Loyola, but played really passive on those set points, didn't they? And sub subsequently lost uh, the, uh, the set and the match. Well, they had match points and played really uh, soft on it. Van Garderen in his indoor career, an outside hitter. So he's used to that left side and that ball's tooled out of bounds using the block to ricochet that ball out of bounds. When you're an outside hitter, you're very comfortable on the left side and that's exactly where Van Garderen is playing. There's a little action crossbody high off the hands. And another unforced error by Cuba. This time it's Sergio going wide. So Cuba all over the place with their shots. Oh, wow. And this is going from bad to worse right now for the Cubans. They just almost look like they're in a fog out there. Can't get any traction. Another ball right down the middle. If I'm the Netherlands, I'm continuing to hammer it right in the middle. This Cuba's just given up way too many points. They're both gone for that one. Gonzalez gets there first. Good work from the backcourt from a, a hustling Van Garderen. Van Garter and Ann Varnhorst, 27 years of age. Remember, Varnhorst really made a name for himself with his former partner, Rinder Numador. There's a look at Van Garter and laying it out. He's gone with youth, and now it's up to Christian Varnhorst to kind of show Van Garter the way on the beach. Well, oh, it goes long again. Yeah, after the match yesterday, Van Garter was all about sort of praising Varnhorst to say, look, he's teaching me the ropes. He's He's you know, keeping me sane on the court. He's pointing me in the right direction. He said, but it feels so comfortable. He feels like he's been doing this for a couple of years. And you have to say, the way they're performing, he's right at the moment, yeah. at least. It's always challenging for a new team to come together and to really have success. And this being a huge opportunity in the round of 16 of the knockout rounds. If they can win this one, the Netherlands be in that quarterfinal, and who knows? Cross court, and it's uh, in, so it's 13-5. And they're almost doing a Cuba to Cuba because you cast your mind back two years ago, nobody knew anything about the Cuban side. And uh, they went and placed uh, fifth at the last World Championships, and then they went to the Olympics and surprised a few people there, finishing ninth. And there's a shot by Gonzalez over the block. You're absolutely right. They shocked a lot of people. I got to speak to them right before the beginning of the Olympics. They were relaxed. And the edge that they had is they hadn't played full time on the FIVB World Tour. So no one really knew what the scouting report was. And they started playing much like you just saw right there. Nivaldo Diaz ripping the serve. We saw a lot of that in Rio. And maybe that will turn things around for them. But by being kind of an unknown quantity, they shocked a lot of teams and ended up in fifth. I thought they were gonna bring home a medal. And those last two plays are a little more characteristic of the Cuban team that I know, the rip of the ace by Diaz and now Gonzalez stuffing that ball cross court and the Netherlands, they've seen enough. Well, there's a little bit more respectability, isn't there, about the scoreline now, the technical timeout. It's 18-13, a difference of five, but still very much uh, the Dutch in control. But it'd be interesting to see how they react when the pressure comes on from Cuba, which you expect it to do. Yeah, Cuba completely asleep. It's almost like they spotted the Netherlands seven points before we got going. Just quickly, Nivaldo, his, his service can be hot or cold. You're down five. Do you think, right, let's just rip it and try and 
try and focus it in for the second set here because it's we're up against it in this first set or is there still too far to go in this first set that you possibly could turn it around? No, I would start rolling the dice. I would start ripping the serve. I'd start trying to do whatever you can to get back in because they're just playing too tentative. They're playing a little bit too soft and that's not their style. They need to get back to what got them to this point and that's aggressive volleyball with nice ball control. Well, let's see what happens. Nivaldo has possession, but he looks like he's going to float this one. He floats it at Van Garderen. And Van Garderen. Calm as you like, just rolls it. Nice high roll shot over the block. When you do that shot, it's just got to be on the fingertips, right out of reach of the blocker. Takes a lot of touch. Oh, he's hit that, hasn't he? How about that rip right there by Diaz. He comes in. We call this away from body. He doesn't rip it cross court. He rips it down the line. And with that six foot seven frame, it's so intimidating. And Gardner just opens the wrist. Thumb away. Yep, you got it. Wrist away, thumb dropped, and a perfect shot. I'm surprised that Van Garderen is oh, touched. It's just sent one down the middle again. Another service ace straight down the middle. Extraordinary that they're still not quite across what to do with that middle serve. Yeah, they almost look disinterested at times. And just nowhere near what they're capable of doing. Set by Baron Horse off the face of uh, Gonzalez. We've seen a lot of that today, haven't we? To seven now, 17 10. And uh, Baron Horse just checking Gonzalez is okay. That ball right off of his face. Whenever you see the glasses and the hat come off, you know you got a player good. Looks like Gonzalez is okay. He's gonna try to clean those glasses off. When that happens, you get a lot of sweat and sand. When they hit the sand and you gotta get them clean, so take advantage of that little break. But that can't feel good on the forehead. Oh. <laughs> Anger management. You, you can just see some of these hits from Cuba. The technique is so strong. Really a whip of an arm. Both these Cuban players have quick arm swing. And some players are really powerful, like Alisson from Brazil, and they use that strength. A guy like Diaz in the backcourt at 6'7 with a, a more lanky frame, he's all about technique. Gonzalez with the block, but it's kept alive by Van Garderen. Now can he finish off a second time? He can. And Van Garderen looking right at home on the sand. He really does. If you told me that he'd been playing on the beach for three months, I would not have believed you. He has made adjustments, and he looks so comfortable out there. It's really impressive. It, it gives a lot of indoor players that hope you know that maybe the transition is not as far off as I believe because they are different the timing's different from playing on the hard court obviously you have six players as opposed to two and the beach you have to be a really well-rounded player and that's exactly what Van Garderen is so I believe that's why he's adapted so quickly Just sounds a little different, Gonzalez, when he whips that ball. It's a big slap sound, just quick, gets the ball to the spot. You see the reaction time from Van Garderen. Just not there. Getting everything out of that reach for Gonzalez. Yeah, hit it uh, about 53 miles per hour. Balls really can 
get up there in terms of speed and velocity. You don't want to take one of those 50 plus across the face, that's for sure. Well, that would hurt. Here's Van Garderen on the outside, clips the top of the net, but still ends up in the in the court. A lot of times when you hit cross court on the top of the net, you run out of real estate and the ball goes out of bounds. Oh, that, that was a yeah. flag by the line judge down here, but first referee acknowledged the flag. But it's seven set points. Yeah, sometimes that happens. It looked like there was a flagging, but the Cubans didn't see it to dispute it, and it's kind of like they just said, let's play on, and how about that? Wrapping up the first set so quickly and easily, the Netherlands. And that just sums up Cuba's first set, that last point, just far too loose. They got destroyed right there. I mean, that was not the team that we saw earlier in the week win the pool 21 to 13. I mean, if you lose 21 to 16 or 15, you've been beaten pretty badly. But 21 to 13 is a crushing looking at these match statistics. Just one block each, but five aces. That's where everything fell apart for the Cubans. So let's get down into the virtual Red Bull Arena, have a look at the uh, serve placement. Wow. Look at that. Trying to pinpoint, you see those blue dots. Those are aces. Those are the five aces coming the majority right down the middle. Gonzalez and Diaz, they have to start figuring things out. They have to start communicating every single time when that ball served, who's gonna take middle and who's gonna step away. Yeah, the length of the pin is where the ball was touched and those ones higher, Gonzalez unable to control the serve. Stuff down right there at the net by Varenhorst. Look at how far he gets up and over the net. Six feet, 11 inches, 212 centimeters tall, getting his head and his eyes up over the top. Oh, good read. From oh, that is a terrible set. It comes out a little too much spin. A double contact's called right there. I think a great call right there by the head referee. Amentino all over the The overhand setting is always a judgment call. That ball too tight. Keep it alive though somehow, the Netherlands. And then would you believe it, Varen Hulse makes the block, hustling the point. Varnhorst, so strong. There's a joust and a beautiful pull out of the net by Van Garderen. And then what do the Netherlands do? They make sure they get the ball in, they set up their defense. There's Varnhorst, and he presses over for yet another block. Right now, Christian Varnhorst on fire. He's got three blocks on the match. Here's the super slow of the and joust. What a great joust right there with nobody netting. A lot of times when the ball suspends like that for so long, someone will end up in the net. Player's doing a good job of avoiding it. Valdo sets, Gonzalez pokes. If you're Cuba, you're thinking, how do we settle down and get ourselves back into it? And I think it's a mindset, just really being on, on point and on target and ready to go every single time. They weren't ready when the whistle was blowing in that first set, and it really cost them. I was mentioning earlier, when you take the ball overhand and set your partner, you see a lot of different techniques. There's the underhand bump, the overhand set. It's a judgment call. If that doesn't come out clean, the ref can call a double contact. And if you hold it too long, they can call a lift. That ball out of bounds. The thing is when you do 
bump set it or use the underhand technique, you're never going to be in danger of mishandling the ball and getting a double contact or a lift. So that's why you see a lot of people underhand set rather than overhand because you don't want to get that violation. Oh, good reactions from Varen Horst to keep the ball alive, but Nivaldo can't beat the block, and it's another point the Dutch really shouldn't have won, but they have. Well, there's the overpass. Gonzalez has to make the Netherlands pay, and if you don't, well, this is what happens right here. The 6'11 Varen Horst patrolling at the net. He's got four stuff blocks so far. And that is a beautiful save by Varenhorst. The one-handed block to keep the rally going and then stuffing it straight down to end it. Varenhorst spending 249 kcals so far. And you saw 0.8 kilometers is distance. Those kcals expended are figured by the distance he has moved around the court as well as the number of jumps. So it's a new statistic to take a look at how much energy is being expended. And Gonzalez now maybe getting some traction up at the net. Check out how he goes so deep into his crouch, kind of squat position and locking out the elbows, pressing over the net and targeting back into the court. Really a nice block by Gonzalez. So he'll serve. It's 5-4 to Van Garderen. Van Garderen rolls. Valde scurrying, can't get there. This is more like it. This is the sort of set we thought we'd get in the first set, wasn't it? Yeah, more back and forth and really more battle, battling. I look at the seeding with the Cubans being 24 and the Netherlands being 45. But, you know, I don't really take that into consideration because the Netherlands being 45 out of 48 teams and one of them was second in the World Championships last year. So... I don't read too much into that seating there. I knew that this would and should be a very tight matchup, but not the case in set one. The Cubans were asleep. Seems like they've woken up a bit here in set two. Oh, Gonzalez is unlucky. Six all. So Varen Horst, plate served to Nivaldo, set by Gonzalez. Nivaldo has been far too loose in this match, hasn't he? He really hasn't brought his A game to the court for the first, what, set and 13 points. Nivaldo Diaz unable to find the court in what looked like kind of a routine play. Again, the serve down the middle causing chaos as they both go for it. Good work from Gonzalez, but still with the Dutch. And Nivaldo does well. Advantage Cuba. Oh, they still keep the ball alive. Who will take the points here? Gonzalez out jousted. How about that rally? So much athleticism. And with a 6'11 frame, Christian Varnhorst moving so well at the net as a blocker. Back and forth, he threw out some fake blocks, dropped, made some fantastic defensive plays. And Christian Varnhorst really leading this Netherlands team. Now with a two-point lead. So here is uh, Baron Horst. This one will go down the middle for sure. No, it goes to Gonzalez, but he's slightly to his right as he takes it and rolls it into unguarded sand. Back to a one-point game. Beautiful 
offense right there. A little side swipe action for the offense out of Gonzalez. Vieira from Van Garderen. Sending it over the net with the set. And Gonzalez happy to strike quickly. The Netherlands better keep on pushing right now. You don't want to give the Cubans any life because if they start playing to what they're capable of, they can really get themselves right back into this thing quickly. Keep serving them tough. Keep being aggressive on the attacks. Well, the Cubans lost the first set in their pool match against the number one seeds and came back to win it. So they have got that mental toughness. It's just whether or not they can do it against a side that are just blocking so well and defending so well. Everywhere. Christian Barnhorst, six now blocks. Registered. As opposed to the other side of the net, Sergio Gonzalez has a couple of his own. Rivaldo finds the roll shot. So nicely placed, you couldn't ask for a better placement. And high over Varnhorst. Diaz and at the technical timeout the Dutch are in front but it's not a five point lead like the first set just a solitary point 11-10 yeah the Cubans definitely keeping this one close as we zoom in to the Red Bull graphics on center court Netherlands serve placement right there. Seemed like they're going to Gonzalez quite often. Not down the middle anymore. That middle strategy seemed to be working. And notice there's no blue dots out there. That means no aces so far in the second set. Not sure why the Netherlands have gone away from that strategy of banging that ball right down the middle with service. It's also very hot out there now, and we heard Nivaldo saying in the post-match interview yesterday that it, yeah, it's not too dissimilar to playing at home in Cuba. It's always hot down there at this time of year. And uh, the Dutch, well, it gets warm in Holland for sure, but not this sort of heat. Yeah, it is blazing out there. So important to hydrate and be ready to go. Because if you're not and you start to cramp, there's really no way to turn that around in time. And wow. Miss hit right there, took his eye off the ball, was Van Garderen. And hopefully he'll have a short memory on that one and get on to the next play. He almost missed that ball completely. Van Garderen targeted again. Sets is a little close to the net, so Van Garderen has to poke, and it's straight to Nivaldo. So Nivaldo with a chance to kill. Good hands from Van Garderen. And Baron Horst gets it back over the net, but it's a vantage cube, a nice set. He's missed it again. Just incredible the amount of errors that are mounting for the Cubans, although they have hung in there here in the second set. And given the amount of errors that Novella Diaz is putting up, would you not serve to it? Oh, absolutely. Anybody who's showing a weakness, you want to exploit that weakness you want to go to them each and every time and that's what the Netherlands they do right here yeah! and it works like clockwork right there Varnhorst registering his seventh block 
there's just nowhere to go. It's I call that putting the hitter in the phone booth. Imagine being in a phone booth and trying to hit the ball as hard as you can. It just goes nowhere. It goes right back at you and into the court. Varnhorst is dominating. Valdo finds the kill. But that shouldn't put the Dutch off going to uh, Nivaldo. thinking we, we got to start making a move there's the hit and the speed 70.19 kilometers per hour Nivaldo finds the winner again he makes it look so pretty when it works. Yeah, when it works. Hasn't been working quite that well here in this matchup. And that ball's going to be out of bounds. So the Netherlands given one back. And we're all tied up. It would be pretty miraculous. You talked about it, Charlie, that the Cubans have shown the ability to come back after a first set loss. And wouldn't this be something? Because they got destroyed in the first set. Yeah, I was going to say, it wasn't just a first set loss. It was a first set annihilation, wasn't it? I mean, 17 against the Brazilians. That's as you pick yourself up because that's not a bad showing. But 13 against a side you would hope to beat. You ask serious questions of the team's mental strength. But they seem to be, seem to be, they're responding well. Good work from Van Garderen. And as quickly as they're drawn back to parity, the Dutch then extend away to two again. Give a lot of credit to Martin Van Garderen. Just playing beach for three months. And if you look at their recent finishes, 25th, 41st, 17. I mean, nothing special at all. But they start to put things together here at the World Championships in Vienna, and they find themselves in the round of 16. It's just incredible. Gonzalez using the block, really challenging the block, and I wouldn't really challenge that block. I try to get around it as. The success of Varnhorst has been really through the roof. Seven stuff blocks on the day. He has been absolutely controlling it. And right now, the Netherlands starting to pull away. Advantage the Netherlands, Cuba running out of time. That's impressive from Gonzalez as he climbs into that spike, firing it down the line. Need points on serve here, Cuba. Couple would give them the advantage. At the business end of this second set. And uh, not pass back uh, between the antenna. Yeah, Gonzalez really going for it that time. If that ball's dug outside the antenna, which it might have been, then Gonzalez could bring it back outside the antenna for then Diaz to go over the net. I've seen that play happen successfully. It's a very difficult move. Tactical serve by uh, Van Garderen. Onto the line. I thought about lifting the flag up, but it was stayed down. It's so hard to track. I mean, he whips it. That ball is absolutely flying. that play 
The frustration on the face of Cuba. Down the middle, I believe Diaz could have made a move. And there it is, that says it all. The hands up in the air by Gonzalez. The frustration with not only his partner, but the result right here. And Valdo Diaz makes it 18-19. And this is a huge point here. Gonzalez has to win this point. Otherwise, Cuba will be down two match points. That ball looks out of bounds, it and is. it is. This Cuban duo, they've won eight Norseka tournaments, taking the world by storm with a fifth in Rio, but they're in a world of hurt here. First match point then, and it comes on the Van and serve. This for a place in the quarterfinals. Van Garderen, oh, almost some confusion in the Cuban ranks, Gonzalez saves the first match point but importantly here comes the second match point and they're going to call a timeout the dutch as uh, nivaldo was preparing to serve they almost messed it up on the service reception didn't they the cubans on that point yeah it wouldn't be a surprise today though we've seen that so many times this right here you know, it's an interesting timeout. You have the lead. You haven't burned your timeout. You know that it's a pressure situation. You're up by one, and if you can receive serve and side out and put the ball away, you will be advancing. So this is a moment for the Netherlands to just really take a breath and take in the moment and prepare for this one serve reception. Seven blocks for that man right there. Christian Barnhorst, who has been absolutely spectacular this afternoon. So here we go. Right here, an opportunity for the Netherlands to get a place in the quarterfinals. Remember, the Netherlands, the 45th seed, but Christian Barnhorst a finalist in the last world champ. Just by the very fact, that's a brave serve on match point by Nivaldo. But here's the chance. Nivaldo comes up with another defensive play. Can he now find the attacking play? He can. Wow, he suddenly finds his game at the moment. The Netherlands really had an opportunity to close it out, and now the Cubans have life. If the Cubans can turn this thing around, win this second set, it'll be all a fresh start for them in the third. How brave was the serve by Nivaldo to go big on match point? Oh. Now. 20 all. And Gardner cuts it and finds the sand and it's a third match point for the Dutch pair. Baron Horse with the serve. The float serve has been very effective today for them. They've gone to Gonzalez and Gonzalez suddenly looks like he's been putting them away all game. And he motions to the crowd trying to get some sort of momentum. He really ripped that ball across court. And all of a sudden, it seems like the Cubans have woken up. They've been asleep for the last 40 minutes, it seems. And now they've stepped up their game. It's a risky hit. Not a lot of real estate to work with, but he finds the spot. Gonzalez points it to Van Garderen. Van Garderen, the block. And it's a set point to Cuba. So, almost shades of the Netherlands against Brazil when they had match points in the second set. Couldn't take them. They played a little passive in that game. Paid the price. Now, can Cuba take this second set? Here's the chance for Nivaldo. Oh, Varenhorst comes up with the block, but it's out. 
and Cuba back from the dead take the second set 23 21 and it is a one set shootout now for a place in the quarter final well the Cubans left it late to come to the party but they found their invitation just in time yeah, they woke up at the very last moment to turn this thing around. I am so surprised right now. If you're the Netherlands, as the players will join second referee for the coin flip, and it looks like the Netherlands will pick side. And there's a look at the final point. Ricochet just out of bounds. Now you go back and you start to think of the Netherlands. They were up 1920. They seemed like they were in flow. They called a timeout to kind of settle things down. And now in hindsight, looking back at that, wow, was that a mistake? Here's the match statistics. Seven blocks to three for the Netherlands. They did pretty much everything thing to win. And let's look at the Cuba serve placement in the set right there. Kind of spreading it all the way around in set number one. Set number two going to Van Garden, Garderen the majority of time. Some in the middle. And that seemed to work for them. Adjusting more to Van Garderen, making sure that he handles every single ball. And this is really miraculous if Cuba's able to complete this comeback. And Garden, and again the flag goes up by the uh, line judge on this near side on the serve. Cuba win this point though. Rivaldo picked up by uh, Varenhorst who then has to improvise and here's Nivaldo soaring for the kill. Nice roll shot to just save things. And how smart is Cuba right there? Making sure that they attack before the Netherlands can get set. And right now, the Cubans have all the momentum. And Garderen gets the scoreboard ticking for the Dutch in this third set. Big hit right down the middle between that blocker and the defender. Two to one, Cuba. Nivaldo goes soft, and they leave it to each other once again. They've done that a number of times, usually on the serve, this time on the block. Wow, it is entertaining to watch the reaction of the Cubans. You got it, I take it. Oh, oh yours, what? yours. It's mine, it's yours. Whose is it? The Sands. Nobody making a move, and remember, with two players out there, you got to make something happen. you got to cover, and Barnhorst registering his eighth block right now. So can the Netherlands get back on track? I guess that's the biggest question here. Side switch every five in the uh, third set. It's a shorter set to 15. There's the block. Here Gonzalez knew nothing about it. He was on him before he could move. Gonzalez with the set, Nivaldo. Goes cute. And finds the intended target three all. It's really amazing to me that Cuba's still in this thing as poorly have as they have played at times. They've somehow been able to hang around and obviously just barely winning that second set was everything. And now Gonzalez up and over the net. Sergio Gonzalez. Began playing volleyball at the age of 10 and then kept playing on the indoor circuit as a youth and finally tried the beach game at age 16 and it has turned out to be the right choice for Gonzalez. The Dutch managing to stay with Cuba. Chasing the scoreboard at the moment in this third set. Point on serve. We put the pressure back on Cuba, who somehow, well, I thought they kept it alive. That is uh, fortunate in the extreme for the Dutch. And now Cuba chasing the set. A little trickler serve over the net. A lot of credit by Diaz even getting a hand on that. Uh, but the Cubans cannot work it out and get it over the net. 
Nivaldo rolls it on the angle and he needed every inch of sand on that angle to get it down in the corner. That loopy roll shot to the corner. Fans having a blast here. Cuban fans cheering on their team in this World Championships. 14 successful attacks, five errors there. Yeah, but it was five and five. So he's really uh, eradicated the errors. So much back and forth, and the Cubans almost left for dead. They find life at the last minute, and now they're going blow for blow, point for point with the Netherlands here in the third. We always call this third set a real sprint of a set because no technical timeout. You only play to 15 points. You switch on increments of five, and you can't afford to get into a hole. So both these teams trading blows dead even. And then the big block from Varenhorst gives the Dutch some daylight for the first time. 8-6. Well, you have to avoid that big block. Easier said than done, for sure. And we're in double digits now for Christian Varenhorst. He's got 10 blocks. Service error. Makes it 7-8, Netherlands. The third side switch. <laughs> big serve, big, big serve. The Cubans really targeting Van Garder and Going for it hard, cross court. Really great extension away from body. I don't care who you are. That's her very difficult to receive. And then he goes the other way. Farron Horse keeps it alive. Can he finish? He can. But that was close for Cuba. Nice reaction in the backcourt. Diaz. Shoots it a little too quickly to Gonzalez. He tries to go over. But the eight-foot wall of the net is right there. Service ace. Going to be a challenge. Our first challenge of the match. So will it be 10-8 or will it be 9 all? Challenge request by Cuba for ball out. So the ball was ruled inbounds. Cuba disputing that it was out of bounds. There's five instances that you can challenge. It's ball in or out, block touch, net fault, antenna touch, or a foot fault. So each team gets two challenges per set. And if you're successful, you retain those challenges. So Cuba finally deciding to use a challenge. It's surprising we've gotten to this point without a challenge in this match. Here we go. And that ball does look, ooh, they're calling it in. Wow. I think as it deflates, it might just catch some of the outside of the line. That's the only thing I can suggest. You know, that had to be the closest challenge that I believe that I've seen and remember, there's three challenge refs. And from the FIVB, they're looking at that video. And that was extremely close. If you're a player and you see it and you're thinking, wow, the challenge might be wrong, you can't really dispute it. But they are invited to go take a look at the review on the call that 
was disputed. That was the closest I've ever seen. That could have gone either way. Well, let's credit the line judge. He called it in in the first place. Yeah, how about that, huh? Here we go, that 11-9, Van Garderen to serve. Remember, the Dutch had three match points in set two. Nice cut shot from uh, Gonzalez. Now, they need a Nivaldo special here, Cuba. Yeah, big issue with the Cubans. They, they've had some problems scoring when they are serving. And they need to make it happen quickly. Oh, a rip of a serve. And he really does have that going on right there. You said it, a Diaz special. And Nivaldo Diaz serves it up right there on cue. Going this time to the veteran. And that is Varenhorst. Wow. One set all, 11 all, a place in the quarterfinals of the World Championships at stake. Another big serve from Nivaldo to Varenhorst, who manages to control it, and then Gonzalez can't make the block. And the Dutch continue to keep their noses in front. The slimmest of errors, he didn't press over the net. You see that right hand, it's a little too far off. He's expecting maybe a shot. And by ha not having that hand over the net, it results in an error. Wow. How about that right there? 13-11 to the Dutch now. One-handed stab from the indoor player turned beach player just three months ago, Van Garderen has been spectacular. So it's uh, Varenhorst to serve with the Netherlands just two points away from the quarterfinals. Nivaldo rolls. Van Garderen is there. Can he make it? Another three match points. Yes, he can. 14-11. And another three match points. They've given up three in the second set, but now they've got three consecutive points to try and win this match. You just never know with this team from Cuba what you're going to get. And a three-point cushion, you never know if that's enough. They start playing at a whole nother level here when the pressure is on. Let's see if they can step up and make this one interesting. Well, the pressure cannot be any greater. Varenhorst to serve. To Nivaldo. Gonzalez with the set. Nivaldo goes big. Fourth match point saved, but there's two more to come. Gonzalez. Needs to go on a run of points or it's all over. The set is too close to the net. Never say never with this Cuban team. I think there's going to be a challenge for a net violation. And the Cuban might have been into the net. Let's take a look at the replay. Whenever you have a joust, usually someone nets on the way down. No, he looks good. Not from that angle anyway. We might see it along the net. Well, we'll go to the Hawkeye system with a much higher frame rate. And when you can see it frame by frame, that never lies. So if this is the case, if Netherlands win this, this thing is over. Here we go. No, it does not look like a fault. No fault is called. And the fist in the air for Gonzalez. He's got life. They've done it again. The Dutch have called a timeout. They did it in the second set before the match point, and it didn't pay for them. They've done it again in set three. The Cubans, well, they're living very, very dangerously here. You just wonder whether or not their luck might run out. Yeah, you can only push the limits so many times, and 
I'll tell you what, they have been entertaining. And what they did in that second set was somewhat of a miracle. I thought they were finished, but they've held on here to their world championship lives. And now the question, can they make it happen one more time? If they can tie this thing up, force it into overtime, I think it would give the advantage to the Cubans. But well, it must do, surely, the way things have gone, but you never know. Yeah, they have to make this a really big play right now. The question, who do you go to? They've been going to Van Garderen, and he's had a lot of success. Remember, he does not have nearly the beach experience of his partner, Varenhor. So you got to see the serve there. Remember, the Cubans rolled the dice, and they could have easily missed that serve at the end of the second set. Will they float or go for it? Looks like a float. It is a floater. And they go to the taller Varenhorst off the block and in. And the Dutch, at the sixth time of asking, take the match. And they are through to the quarterfinals. Bit of disappointment for Cuba, who fought so valiantly after such a terrible start to the match. At the sixth time of asking, though, they just couldn't rescue the situation. And eventually their luck runs out. And it is the Netherlands that progress to the quarterfinals. The team that